Hey everyone, welcome to our CEO webinar series on Rockstar Recruiting. We're just uh, get, getting started here, letting everybody start filtering the room. Do me a favor, make your way over to the chat on the right side and just let us know where you're dialing in from today, just so we, uh, we know that uh, the chat's working, we know you can hear me, and we know that we have some engagement moving right out of the gate. Awesome, Fort Worth, perfect. Everybody, as you're coming in, just start to hit the chat, let us know. We're, uh, we have a great one today. We're going to get started pretty quick. Uh, just give everyone a final few seconds to uh, to connect here, but we have a jam-packed session here on Rockstar Recruiting, and uh, we also have an LMS series of the same title that'll be coming out first quarter next year. So uh, you get a sneak preview of the stuff that's going to be in that, as well as uh, a couple great insights to help you uh, walk out of here with some tangible action items today. So let's get started here. I, uh, I apologize for the background. I'm at my uh, I'm at my parents' house, dog sitting, and uh, this is what their kitchen looks like. So uh, Aaron does not have a, a virtual background option yet. So this is what we got here today. But quick uh, introduction to me for those who I haven't met before. My name is Vince Carone, the director of content development here, and uh, I'm excited to bring you this uh, this webinar today. So what we're talking about today is rock star recruiting, and the purpose of this today, the, the reason why we're here is to help focus your recruiting brand and efforts. So walking out of this webinar, I want you to be able to implement a new idea or two in your recruiting branding, and I want you to be able to identify a barrier to entry that you may be able to remove. So we will we will define what we mean by barrier to entry. We will also have an action item where you can walk out and go, how can I maybe remove this? So I'm going to drop a, uh, a link in the chat here. If you click that, it's going to download a PDF for you automatically, and it's a worksheet, a fillable PDF, Make sure you open it in your finder window, not in the browser. That way you can fill it out and save it as you go and walk out with some action items on that as well. Quick lay of the land before I get into the agenda here. If you look up top next to the chat, you'll see a Q&A option. We'll have some time at the end to ask some questions to our facilitator for the day. So put your Q&A questions in there as well. And feel free to engage in the chat along the way. The advisors at Cultivate will be able to answer some questions while our facilitator is talking as well. So again, grab that worksheet out that, uh, that we put in the, the link there, get that ready to go, and you'll be directed on when to actually fill out that worksheet as we guide you through the session in here today. So quick, uh, quick agenda, we're gonna talk about using your job description as a marketing tool. We're gonna talk about how to remove unnecessary barriers to entry, how to stand out and recruit with empathy, and then at the end, I'll come back on, grab some takeaways and wrap up, and we'll have some time to go to round tables if you want to continue the look on what we're talking about and, and uh, talk to like-minded individuals about it. Or you can just go network and, uh, and talk about your own business as well. We'll have some time for that at the end. So with that being said, I'm going to stop my screen share here. I'm going to bring Jody Sutley to the stage with me. Jody, why don't you come out here and when you get out here, you can share your screen. And uh, so Jody is our recruiting manager here at Cultivate Advisors and uh, just a just a great person and a pleasure to be around. And I've sat through and, and worked with Jody on uh, what we're going to present here today. I'm really excited for everybody to see it. So, uh, Jody, how are you? I'm doing very well. How are you today, Vince? Um, I'm doing awesome. I appreciate it. And uh, so if you share your screen here, uh, nobody wants to see me. They want to see you. I'm going to get out of here in, uh, in just a minute once we, uh, once we have everything lined up. So, again, for everybody, chat on the right side. If you're just joining, play at the top right as well. Put some questions in there. And, uh, and we'll answer some as we go, and we'll answer some at the end as well. Jody, I can see your screen. I can hear you. The floor is all yours. Take it away. All right. Wonderful. I'm really excited to be here, and I'm really excited around these topics. I've spent the last decade specialized within talent acquisition and recruiting for multiple industries, including corporate tax, manufacturing, oil and gas, hospitality, healthcare. I'm also a certified HR professor, Sherm, and at the start of the pandemic, took a role as a one-person HR department for a family-owned company out of Charleston, South Carolina, that continued to work on site. After a year of being pulled in different directions and rewrite company COVID policy, what felt like monthly, I felt my calling back into the world of recruiting. Why do I love recruiting? The reward that comes with the perfect alignment of person and position is undeniable. Your company needs good people, and good people, though they may not know it yet, want to be at your company. Are you ready to hire? Great. Do you know who you need to hire? Do you know how to select who to interview? Do you have your interviewing product outlined? 
These are crucial to recruiting, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time here today. Casey Clark has done an amazing webinar previously that covers all of these topics. And the link for that webinar is in our community portal. And I, I certainly recommend taking a look if you have not. If you're here today and you're not ready to hire, there will still be some useful content that will help you get ahead when the time comes. Some elements covered in today's topics, like thinking about your brand, your mission, vision, values, may have you assessing your current culture or employees in a way that will be helpful towards positioning yourself in a good spot when it comes time to hire. So what I wanna start our focus on is what do your candidates care about? Specifically as it relates to the job listing that they apply to. You've identified you have an opening and I'm betting you have at least a basic standard job description that correlates to the role. So you post it and you wait for the applicants. Let's face it, first impressions matter. A posted job description or job ad is typically the first experience a potential employee is going to have with your company. So think through this. What are you portraying in your job posting? Think about this candidate, this prospective candidate as a customer. What's their experience with you right off the bat what do you want that experience to be? Does this reflect your brand? Take every opportunity to sell to top talent. You're hopefully accustomed to selling during the interview process. Again, please see Casey's webinar for more on that. And hopefully you are taking the time through the rest of that candidate's journey to sell them on the company and the role. But it all starts with the job posting. As with the real estate market, there is an employment market. Sometimes it's an employer controlled market, like in 2008 when employers could be choosy. Sometimes, like today, it's a candidate market. I'm seeing numbers like 10 million job openings and 8.4 million unemployed looking for work, along with an estimated 65% of employees that are looking for a new opportunity who are currently employed. We're seeing that across almost every industry, candidates have a choice in where they agree to work. I'm gonna pause and say that again. Candidates have a choice in where they agree to work. Put yourself in their shoes. What do they care about? What do they really wanna get from their job? Trends are pointing to it being about more than just a paycheck these days. And I'm going to show you a few examples of companies that are selling to top talent through this lens. Some job seekers will care about flexibility of schedule and benefits. I drop off and pick up my kids from school, so I can't work early or late. And I need to make enough to make it worthwhile. I can only work two days a week, and it can't interfere with my other job. I full time, just not daytime, and I need benefits, good ones. And you know, it'd be nice if you paid for my tuition, like all of it. Some job seekers will care about how it will feel to show up to work daily as their authentic selves. Hi. No. Hi, I'm Taylor. Hi, I'm here for my interview. I'm Dorian and I use the pronouns he, him. Are you comfortable sharing how you would like to be addressed? Thank you for asking. I use they, them pronouns. Great. Well, I'd love to hear more about your skill set. Some job seekers will care about how their work makes a difference to the world around them. My work has been viewed by a hundred million people. My work helps save lives. My work has gone platinum. My work is people. I work at FedEx. Take your career to the next level with one of our many open positions. 
Let's pause here for a moment and reflect on how to use all this information. We're gonna take some time. Let's pull up that worksheet that Vince shared. First thing we wanna do, and yep, Vince plugged it right in the chat again if you missed it. So let's go ahead, start with that very first block. We'll tackle that one first. Let's write down three reasons why any prospective employee should wanna work for your company. Maybe you've already done some of this work and they're already in your mission, vision, and values. If, uh, if you've got some ideas and you're already throwing them on your worksheet, throw them into the chat if you want. All right, do we have some of those reasons? The three that any person should wanna work for your company. All right, let's go one layer deeper with a certain role in mind. Write one reason a prospective employee wanna work for your company and in this role. This might vary by level and position of who you're hiring. A manager may not have the same priorities as your entry level candidates. Again, throw this one into the chat. Yeah, thank you, Brittany. Travel, good pay, personal development. Those are all great things to think about. Right. You got your three for the company and the one for this open position. Yeah. Awesome. Autonomy. Yeah. Great reason. Right. So you got here and you've brainstormed four reasons someone should want this job. Use them, be intentional. You spent time creating your company mission, vision, and values. They should be in the job ad. If you already have someone in this role, ask them why they like it and use that information. Maybe you've identified it's fun as a reason someone might want this role, but your job ad reads like a grocery list of tasks. That's a misalignment. So let's take a look at what that could look like. Yeah, this is a lot of words. We're not going to sit here and read these block paragraphs. But if we did, what you would see is this company listing task after task and the skills that they are looking for. Nowhere do you see what's in it for the employee, either compensation wise or how they're going to add value to this organization laundry list of things that this company wants. What if I told you that this is a healthcare organization where this role is directly helping hospital physicians with their ability to treat patients at the highest level? Does that change how you might impact the role, the, the way that this role can, can have on the organization as a whole? Why isn't it in there? This is a shorter one, a little easier to digest and sit with for a moment. So now that we've kind of reflected on that last one, throw into the chat what you think is missing from this. Do you see anything in here for the candidate? Mm, mm hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 
Even if we read on, and yes, that was just a small snippet, the laundry list does continue, you will find nothing in this job ad about the company mission, nothing about what they're gonna receive in terms of pay or benefits. Even on the, the bottom, it says that it's full time and you're kind of scratching your head going, what does that mean? What hours am I working? Is it salary, hourly, help? Give me some information and direction on why I might even want this position. All right, so we've reflected on a, a couple ways to not do this. Let's take a look at some, some good examples. And again, I kind of have, have I condensed it down to the, the things that you need to see in this job listing. So this one here, and we have removed the company name, although they did a fantastic job. The very first sentence off by what this candidate's going to receive when they choose a career with this organization instead of what the company is going to receive from the candidate. Endless personal and professional career growth. That sounds pretty fantastic. Even in the requirements listing, which, yeah, there were a lot more bullet points than this one. This was the very last bullet point to demonstrate and be a role model of their core values. What are their core values? Care, confidence, curiosity, community. And hey, it's lunchtime. I can't ignore the free employee meal offering that comes with the benefits. Um, it, is anything sticking out to y'all? Yes, Dan, lunch, absolutely. Yeah, I guess we all wanna work for this organization at this moment in time, huh? Yes, tuition assistance, absolutely. The, there were more requirements. I, I pared it down to showing the, the shiny one. Yep, paid time off, 401k, yeah. All these are absolutely things that uh, if you're a candidate reading this, they're going to cite you, make you want to work for this organization. All right, another example. This company has a uh, really directly speaking to who their ideal candidate is. And their ideal candidate cares about education, award-winning curriculum, supportive school community, these are things that someone in this field is likely to hold in very high regard. They show pride in their service, even going as far as to put actual feedback from the parents of students that are enrolled in this. Yeah, absolutely. What's in it for me? If you go into education, chances are it's because you care about education. Anything else sticking out to you? Uh, to anyone, if you want to throw it in the chat about, about this company summary. It did go onwards to list the requirements and the necessary skills. It also went on to list some of the benefits, the 401k, how it's going to be paid. Mm -hmm. Supportive school community. I mean, I, we all know teachers, right? How, how important is that? Yeah. All right, so we've thought through your job ad a little bit and, and what you might wanna throw in there if it's not there yet and how you might wanna think about, about this lens of, yeah, what's in it for me? Now let's think about removing unnecessary barriers to entry. What does barrier to entry mean? It's a broad term. It covers essentially anything within the job ad or the application process that might make a candidate second guess if they're going to be a fit. So this could look like gender language in the job description industry-specific jargon that might scare someone away with transferable skills from a different industry. 
unrealistic job requirements, asking for 10 years of experience in a role, you're going to scare away the candidates potentially that only have six. Now, don't get me wrong. There are absolutely times when a certain credential is going to be completely necessary to this mission. I am not recommending that you hire a pilot without a pilot's license or a surgeon that didn't graduate from med school. But ask yourself with every qualification, did you just copy and paste a job description? Or do they really need to have this in order to satisfactorily perform this role? Am I maybe creating barriers and potentially, without meaning to, discriminating? And what does that mean? Well, diversity begins with hiring. Not just racial diversity, which of course is important, but also other minority groups, more excuse me, minority groups, including women, veterans, people with disabilities. Words like healthy and young might seem innocent, but even in using those words to describe your company or your employees, you will discourage candidates with physical disabilities from applying that to that job including a phrase like great opportunity for a student is going to discourage older candidates from applying. Mature persons preferred. That's going to do the exact opposite. So reflect for a moment. Are there any barriers that you've created that might be impacting your ability to get good people through your door? As with the pilot example, it really might be necessary. And the more important question to be asking yourself with all of this, is why are you looking for this? My favorite example is the college degree. What are you trying to accomplish by making sure that your applicants have college degrees? Willingness to learn is not a degree. Motivation is not a class in college. You might be losing perfectly qualified people because they did not go to college. Similarly, high school diploma or GED. Years of experience. Certain softwares. Has a car. Now, granted, if you're hiring delivery drivers, yeah, they probably need to have reliable transportation. But if this person's working from an office, why is this a need if they know that they can get to work and get home? Lately, do they have to be in the office or can it be remote is a popular one to be asking yourself too. And proximity to office. Let's not make any assumptions based on how far they might have to drive to get to you. You still might be exactly what they're looking for. I would guess that one or more of these may be present in your current job listings. Don't be embarrassed about it. Throw it into the chat if this is you. We've all been there. Thanks, Vince. Yeah, let's get a poll going. All right. Some real personal reflection going on here. Some people really thinking it through. So what I want you to think about next is a small tweak 
to how you're thinking through the requirements of who is going to be able to perform satisfactorily in the position. I'm gonna suggest you think about the competencies needed in order to perform the responsibilities. Again, a responsibility task that that role does. And yes, there are key responsibilities that every role in your organization has. But what are the competencies needed to satisfactorily perform that task? And is it something that you might be able to kind of open your mind on a little bit? Let's say you're filling an office administrative role. And what you think you need is for this candidate to come with a certain amount of years of experience. How many people on this call have years of experience on one of their job listings currently? Mm-hmm. And again, might be necessary, really might. Great, yeah, that's a lot of you, okay. So let's think about this. Could those key responsibilities be taught to someone who has the right competencies? So if in this administrative role, what you need is for this person to have attention to detail, additionally, you need them to be customer service minded, thinking always about their, their customer interactions. All right, great. Is there a reason that you can't take somebody with these competencies from say, experience in serving at a restaurant and train them on how to do the responsibilities? Thank you, Vince. Yes, self-reflection is important. All right. So let's stay on this for a second. Let's take a longer pause here and reflect. Think about an open role in your company. What are the three main responsibilities of this role? What competencies does it take to complete them? Yes, thank you Vince for sharing the worksheet again. Thank you Colin for sharing. And as you're thinking through this, feel free to throw it in the chat, what the responsibility is, what the competency is. A lot of other people in this conversation may get a benefit out of it because their company might have a similar responsibility going on. And, and yeah, there's a lot more competencies than just the ones I showed you. Yep, team play or sense of accountability, perfect examples. Some urgency can be another example of a competency. Being persuasive and getting people to follow you. That's another competency. Being able to coach employees. That's a competency we'd like all of our leaders to have, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Accountability is a good one. Some roles require someone who's a fantastic listener. That could be one. Some roles are gonna require someone who's a good writer. Maybe that's one. Mm, problem solving, yeah, that's a great one. Attention to detail is a very popular one. There's gonna be some roles where you have to Creatively think, that's a competency. Yeah, 
Oh, resourcefulness. Very good one. How about integrity? Is that, is that a competency that people might need in a certain role? I'm going to encourage you to, to separate when you're thinking about communication written and spoken. Those are kind of two different competencies there. I'm going to encourage you to separate those out. Yeah, assertiveness might be needed in certain roles. Absolutely. Sebastian, you're coming up with some great things there. I'm going to encourage you to, to keep the competencies to like three words or less. That's usually when we think about competencies, what, what they kind of include. Yes, exactly. All right. Now that we've thought through that, let's talk a little bit more about what your barriers to entry look like. An additional example of a barrier can be found in the application process itself. What are your requirements to submit an application? And are they creating barriers? Favorite example is the cover letter. It's entirely possible that your ideal candidate is currently employed. They finish their eight to 10 hour work day. They pick up the kids, dinner. They put the kids to bed. They go to sleep. They do it all over again. When did they have the time to write a thoughtful cover letter? Should they have done that during dinner? Should they have done that right before they fell asleep? They didn't. And now you are the one who is missing out. Ask yourself, why are you even asking for this? Are you looking for their ability to write well? Are you looking to see, can they think creatively? Are you looking to see, can they follow directions? And is there anything that you can do instead that captures the same information but doesn't require an extra fiery hoop for them to leap through. In the past, I've used describe yourself in three words. I often find it's very telling. The direct question of what would you gain by working at this company? Maybe one sentence, three sentence response, but from that you can gauge are they aligned with your values? And also, can they, can they write a sentence? If you're looking for creative fun first, what is your superpower? Any other ideas? If, if anyone has some, throw them into the chat. What, what can you use maybe? in place of a cover letter. Awesome, Denise. All right, so you've thought about all these barriers to entry. Let's pull back up that worksheet. Last one. Let's think for a moment here. What are your requirements to submit an application? Go ahead and throw them in the chat. What are you currently asking for?
Colin, that's fantastic. And yeah, in thinking about that interviewing process, it's uh, always, you know, if it's gonna be in person, yeah, how are they treating everyone they come across? Sure, it's not necessarily part of their application, but it is it is something to be thinking about when they come in. Mm -hmm, yes, you can often, put these added questions in to whatever applicant tracking system you're using. When they submit their resume, you can usually add little questions. Uh, a lot of the job you know, advertising platforms have that feature too. All right. You've thought a little bit about the fiery hoops that you're asking people to jump through. Now that you've thought about them, what can you change about it to open it up more? And now I'm encouraging you after this conversation Revisit this worksheet because some of these are going to take some intense thought, maybe even rewriting your job description completely. So we've talked about how this can get you a more diverse candidate pool. There is an extra step that you can use if it speaks to you. Now, if you're one of our clients, you'll be getting these slides. But if this is speaking to you, go ahead and screenshot it. What else can you be doing to encourage a diverse applicant pool? You can plug this on the bottom of any job listing that you have created. We recognize that people come with a wealth of expanse and talent beyond just the technical requirements of a job. If your experience is close to what you see listed here, please still consider applying. Diversity of experience and skills combined with passion is a key to excellence. We encourage people from all backgrounds to apply to our positions. Please let us know if you require accommodations during the interview process. We'll hang out here for a moment in case you want to reread, in case you need to screenshot it still. I can't personally claim credit for this one. HR, we always share best practices. And this one spoke to me. I was in a role where I was having a struggle finding qualified candidates in terms of what my hiring managers considered qualified. You put this up and your definition of qualified changes a little bit. And the candidate's definition of, am I qualified changes? And they go from going, oh, I don't have 10 years of experience. I only have six. Instead they go, you know what? I've got everything else. And this company has everything I want. Let's give it a shot together. So remember those stats I showed you a little while ago on the job market? Yeah, you're probably gonna need to stand out from the crowd if you want to be the place that a candidate agrees to work. How do I suggest doing that? I call it recruiting with empathy. What does that mean? Remember that you are thinking about your candidates as customers. The interview process is a two-way street. 
you have to make sense for them and vice versa. They have to make sense for you. Save time in the whole process by addressing the candidate's big outcomes, questions, and concerns. It is as much about them as it is about you. I like to have a no surprises conversation. I believe it's a rare person that actually likes surprises. Even rarer for people to like surprises in their professional and work lives. So here's the verbiage that I often put around this. The last thing that I want is for you to start and have this job or company not be what I said it was. On the same note, I expect the same of all of our candidates. I don't want to get too far in this process with you and get surprised. Let's make sure that we're on the same page from here on out. Show you value their time. Time is a precious resource for all of us, including your candidates. Have your process flushed out. Who are they gonna meet with? When? What is the agenda? When are you going to get back to them? Set expectations. And do what you say you are going to do. Do I need to repeat that one too? Do what you say you're going to do. No better way to break trust completely than not do what you said you were going to do. Lastly, follow up with everyone. Remember, this can be really personal for people. Looking for a job is personal. Don't ghost anyone. Reject the ones you are not going to move forward with. They would rather hear a no than crickets. And again, do it on the timeline you said you would. And let's just say you're sitting here and you're going, oh gosh, I haven't done that yet with my most recent batch of candidates. It's usually not too late. Again, they'd rather hear a no than nothing at all. All right. I'm so glad that you joined me today. I really hope that you have taken at least one thing away from this conversation to implement immediately. And maybe one thing that you're gonna implement over time that's going to help you when it comes time to post your next position. I feel passionately about everything that I shared today and I'm happy to discuss it at greater length, answer questions, bring you back on invents. Awesome, Jody. I appreciate it. You did a great job and uh, you get some good feedback here from everyone. We did have a couple questions uh, that came in, but uh, I just wanted to share, I thought those uh, stats were powerful as well. I know when you and I were putting this together and you were showing me the job description as a marketing tool, I was sitting there, uh, you know, listening to you and playing along, but I was humbly embarrassed because I know I've created many uh, a terrible job descriptions. I was guilty of going to find a job description already created and just copying that and changing a couple things to make it easier on me, not realizing I'm taking somebody else's uh, probably, uh, you know, poor work and just uh, slapping my name on it, which is like the absolute wrong way to go. So, Hey, I've been there too. I've been there too. So it's certainly eye opening for me. We've got, we have a couple questions here and then we'll, uh, we'll pull some takeaways from everybody as well. I know, uh, I know uh, over 70% of the room said they had a barrier to entry they thought was unnecessary. So I know we'll have some good takeaways and people are going to grab some good feedback. This, But let's start with, uh, Kyle had just asked uh, a few moments ago, what I'm going to put it on stage here and just read it for everyone here. What's the balance between reaching out yourself and waiting for follow-up? Like 
we usually wait for follow-up from candidates we like post interview uh and reaching out first so you know at, at what point do you want to hear from them what point do you want to be proactive if you already know yeah this is a, it's definitely a fun dance you you do everyone wants to feel wanted right um so you your company you want to feel wanted and yeah probably your all-star candidates are going to reach out to you to thank you and this that and the other but that's no excuse for ghosting someone just because they didn't get back to you you're the professional here right so i would say if you told them you were going to follow up Follow up on that timeline regardless of what their actions are. You only have control over what you are doing. So you make sure that you are doing the best by everybody. Awesome, thanks. Uh, Melissa had said, we're hearing from clients that they're having trouble recruiting, especially in the trades or service sector. Many are just throwing money at people to attract, but it's not sustainable. What do you have for companies in this situation? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's def um, you saw those stats. These numbers are hard. And yes, absolutely, the trade in the service sector is getting hit the worst. You have to figure out what you are offering that's different from everybody. Maybe it is money, but you're right. That's going to be a short-term thing. It's going to be a lot of turnover. How are you different and how are you going to keep people? Do you provide a level of training that nobody else does to where they might start entry level, but yeah, you're going to be promoted likely in the next few years because you're going to have X amount of training with us. Do you do tuition reimbursement? Do you offer health benefits and nobody else in town does for their hourly employees? Figure out what your differentiator is and constantly try to speak to it. I'm not saying that this is going to solve all the world's problems considering, again, those stats. But everything that you can do in your power is what you have control over. So think about those three things of why someone would wanna work for your company. Yeah, maybe versus your competitors. Maybe even think about it through that lens. Awesome, thank you. And uh, one final question here, unless any others uh, through. Uh, Colin had asked, Colin who'd shared a couple of unorthodox tips as well from his client. So if you had uh, <laughs> seen those in the chat, um, feel free to grab those out of there as well. Those are some interesting ways to go about it. Uh, Jody, what tips would you have in framing the opportunity for those recruiting for roles in a nonprofit organization where they may not have the budget to afford things like tuition pay or high-end benefits? Oh, I love this one, Colin. Um, most people don't go into nonprofits because they want the money. That's usually not their why. But let's think about the why. The why is likely going to be the impact of the work performed. What is it that your nonprofit does? Speak to the people that is that that believe in your mission already. And those are the people who are going to be your all-star employees. Awesome, Jody, thank you. Um, one final sweep of the chat. Any last minute questions for Jody? Awesome, well, if they come in, Jody, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure we, uh, we send it to you. Yeah, Melissa, you, you mentioned the Acmax tool we use is a great recruitment tool to help find ideal candidates and help you screen candidates as well. So I'll talk more about that in a moment on how to find it, but a uh, great plug there. Jody, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate, we will have this, uh, we will have this recording up by the end of the week in our, in our client portal. And we'll have these slides put in there as well so you can go back for your takeaways. I'm just going to talk to the group for just a couple quick moments to wrap up, pull a few takeaways here, and I'll send everybody on their way. So thanks, Jody. I appreciate it. Thank you for letting me share today. Great job. Awesome. All right. I'm going to pull back up uh, just a quick deck here. So we had 70% uh, of the room say that they had a, uh, a barrier to entry that they felt was probably unnecessary after Jody started going through that. And she, uh, she had listed a bunch of uh, potential ones. So... I'm just wondering, what is a, a big takeaway or two sticking with you? And if it was the barrier entry that you want to remove, share that. If it was something you want to add to your job description, share that. And this is uh, done for two ways. One, uh, there's an accountability factor here to make sure you, what you came here for. But two, if you share something, it might help somebody else see things from a different lens. Like, oh, I didn't think of that. So drop in the chat what one or two takeaways are from you, uh, from you today. Sebastian, I think you said a few tips for your interview next week. I would love to know what the, what the, the biggest one that you're going to put into focus for next week is. Yeah, 
We'll give everybody a moment or two to type. Yep, remove the barriers to entry. Dan, bringing focus to the to the WIFM. What's in it for me for candidates? Yep. Jeffrey, yeah, I, I want to rework our job posting to highlight the pros of the position instead of just what we need. Colin says he's going to steal Jody's line. The last thing I want is for you to get hired for a job that is different than what you expected. So I'd expect the same from you as a candidate in terms of accurately representing yourself. It's a great way to align on that expectation out, up front and and make it a win-win for both parties. Larry said he loved the quote regarding diversity to your prospects. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a great way to, uh, to put it at the end of the description to, to make an impact and still not uh, filter out those, uh, you know, just by accident, by nature of what we posted in there. Neilofer said, do you love the barrier segment? Yep. Brittany, you already shared, but you want to take things out of, the, yeah, you want to take things out of the years of experience perspective and see what candidates skill set is. Yeah, I think the biggest takeaway for me when Joe talking through that piece was, how do if I can define what I'm really looking for by years of experience, I can actually frame it that way instead of just this blanket years of experience line. Like, why do I want years of experience? What does years of experience mean? What does it come with? And then start to narrow it down to that versus just saying the years, it's either years or nothing. It's the skill that comes with the years. Define that. Um, Avery, yeah, you're going to eliminate some of the unnecessary repetitive questions. Lawrence, over the phone, you sell our company well, but you'll be adjusting the description. Yeah, I take the time. The description is the marketing that gets them on the phone, and that's the piece that we all have a tendency to skip through very, very quickly. Doug, last one I'm going to read here. I appreciate you posting. Creating a much better job description. Make sure you're selling to your, co yeah, your company to the candidate with that. Yes, yeah, uh, it was eye-opening for me when I, when I saw that. I was like, of course, that's what should be done, and why, why was I ever copying and pasting somebody else's and just making it my own? Why wouldn't I put the time in on that to drive better candidates my way who want to work for me versus just this generic job I posted? So awesome. Well, I appreciate that, everyone. Thank you for putting that in there. So add this to your roadmap. If you're in this spot and you're hiring and you want to start to rework some of these, add it to your roadmap to continue working on with your advisor. And if you want to watch this webinar again and slow down and go to the worksheet and get some more pieces, again, it'll be in the community portal under all the webinars. You'll see this uh, webinar recording the worksheet and the slide deck will be in there if you're a current client of ours. And uh, our last webinar of the year will be on December 16th. We're talking about uh, customer service, something that we all have in our companies, whether you have a customer service team or whether you are providing that service, we're gonna dive deep into that, how to handle some problematic customers and some great opening ways to help you work with it. Uh, for example, eliminating ways dealing with customers. We don't deal with customers, we help customers. We're going to dive into that on December 16th. And uh, as Melissa was saying, Acumax Pro. So Acumax Index is an assessment tool that helps your leadership and recruiting efforts. We're talking today about how do you start to get the right people in and then how do you start to filter them down and understand how you'd lead them, how they'd be led, how they work in a group, how they'd work on your team. That's what Acumax Index does. As a client, you get 10 free assessments. Go to the client portal. Use those assessments, understand what your current team is, and use them in your recruiting efforts. If you want to upgrade to Acumax Pro, we strongly encourage it. You get 19, over 19 different pages of insights, advanced leadership and recruiting reports. We've, uh, we've, got, a, we've got quite a few clients that have already upgraded, and it's greatly helped the recruiting and leadership efforts. Reach out to your advisor or go in the portal to talk more about that. I can set up a 15-minute call with you and walk you through that as well. We're always looking for future advisors to help our business. If you know somebody that'd be a great fit, send them our way. We'd really appreciate that. And so if, uh, if you're going to stick around afterwards, once I end the session, you'll be kicked back out to the lobby. You can jump into these round tables here and you could sit uh, at, a group, uh, at a group table. You can talk through this worksheet, converse with others, see what they've done, kind of get the next steps on this. Or you can just network and go through the speed networking or just connect on other business issues. Uh, we'll have a couple advisors that are probably scattered throughout some of the roundtables. We'll keep the room open until about 1.30 central time, about another 35 minutes of that, and then, uh, and then we'll close it out. So we appreciate you, as always, taking your time. If you're in the States, have a, have a great holiday uh, next weekend, and, uh, and uh, we will see everybody back on December 16th. So thank you, everybody. See you next time.